you so much for tuning in to yet another episode of The Stew. We are so delighted to have you watch us today. I'm Anika. I'm Les. And I'm Janae. <laughs> and we have so much good things to talk about today. First and foremost, the numbers are in and it appears that people between the ages of 18 to 25 make up the majority of registered voters in the country. And I'm very excited to hear that. Yeah, when I saw this story, Sorry. I automatically thought of you as like, Anika would be rejoicing yes. right about now. Because yes. <laughs> yes. you're always saying, get registered. Yes. Youngsters, millennials, go out there, do your thing. So... Yeah, congrats. Yeah. Like our nation, we've Now here's yeah. the thing. Done My, it ain't time to chair good. yet because yeah, you true. know, people generally, I mean culturally people vote based on um what their family usually vote for or which party rather their family vote for. So, I mean, you know, vote for who you want, but I think it's absolutely incredible and it just it is a testament that young people we truly do have a voice in this yeah. country yeah. and we can change what we want to. So, go ahead and exercise that right. Definitely small wins, but yes. men yeah. are still kind of down in the numbers. Yeah. Women um, trump men by about 16%. Wow. Mm -hmm. So, we also want the men to get out there and realize that, you know, your voice is a big part of this too so go out and register to vote mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> exactly and pick up your cards too before march 31st oh, just drop them off let's still um, <laughs> you're still the on this delivery service, service. Yeah. <laughs> i don't Very do lines true. i'm Very like true. just drop it off just drop or just it. go at the most awkward time which is uh i don't know i'm not sure <laughs> but like first thing in the morning, first nobody's the morning. on the line yeah. at all. Yeah, I like yeah. that idea. Yeah. Mind you, around 11 isn't so bad either. I mm -hmm. think that's when I'd pick mine up. Can we just also just try to develop a system that isn't so archaic? Like, mm -hmm. just to get registered, I had to walk inside, present my passport, they write up a thing, then you had to sit and then wait for the guy to call you to take a picture, then you had to sit again, then they had to call you in order of other... But Can we just narrow it down to three steps? I hey. swear they like to write those. Okay, let's <laughs> write everything. It's still a written system. Is, <laughs> yeah, so Listen, beyond, I have to take this moment to applaud all the girls who work in the bank and these government office who just write because your penmanship have to be so on point. These girls just be writing like it ain't a thing. And I'm like, girl. still bring out the ruler. I mean, come on, guys. Aww. You don't even need that. At, you don't it's need 2017. That right now. People are actually using computers to do this stuff. Yes. But talking about 2017, <laughs> the world's oldest billionaire has passed at 100 101, Whoa. Mr. Rockefeller, and oddly enough, he was the el the eldest grandson of the Rockefeller family. Wow. Um, I know don't know much about them, but I know that name. Yeah, <laughs> that's it's a, it's it. a legacy for sure. Yeah, wow. especially in New York area. So. so he was one of the richest men in the world. What was what what, what was he worth? Uh, three point three billion dollars. Yeah. yeah, but he was only like six hundred on the list of billionaires in the world. So exactly. I mean, not only I mean. We'd be trying to get there, right? You know, but, yeah, yeah. Um, but he gave a lot of his money. He was a philanthrop philanthropist, lordy. <laughs> and um, and uh, yeah, he was a really good man, which is, is, is good to hear about a billionaire. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So switching gears now is your replacement in your circle. Oh, she just looked right at me. <laughs> do I explain, Janae? Yeah, what do you mean This exactly? is a hard one to explain. Uh -huh. ha have you ever seen the third wheel? And then he just ended up with the second wheel of the third wheel. Oh, oh, so you mean if I'm dating a guy and we break up and he ends up with the person that always came as the third wheel on our yeah. date? Mm. Wow. That's deep. Uh, boy. And it's someone to replace me. <laughs> but, yes. Les did this. It's someone to replace wow. me. But um, <laughs> isn't that the same as, you know, you would never date your friends? Yeah, but friend? could you imagine with when it comes to love, like... What do you do if you if someone ends up falling in love with? I mind. I say, you know what? Get love where you can get it. I ain't care no more. So here's my question: Is it, Kim Kardashian oh was Kim Kardashian a third wheel when it came to Kanye and Amber then? And then they came. No, they were I think that entire circle with Amber Rose and Kim and and everyone else, Black China, mm -hmm. they were all friends mm -hmm. at one point. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. I think it just became a matter of all right, this person and I aren't talking anymore. <laughs> but you know what? I've always kind of had my eye on you. So what you saying? You know what? It sounds like doing? Nassau. Nassau so small. I feel like that yeah. happens more times than often. Yeah. Hair just because. The Bahamas Nassau is so small, so I say get I mean, it where you can But can I tell it. you, interestingly enough, so I don't know if you've um, seen the news lately, The Weeknd and Selena Gomez are an item. They're a couple. Oh, for how long? Yeah. But The Weeknd and Justin now. Bieber 
are from Canada, so we can assume that maybe they knew each other or they were friends. It's like, you know, it yeah. all happens in this Hollywood circle and it's yeah. such oh, yeah. a big thing. Yeah. Especially, you expect that in Hollywood Listen, because they all know each other. I feel much, too, together. Yeah. if you find someone that you're happy with, like, why would you not date them because they were attached to somebody you know. Like, you're robbing yourself of happiness in a good love story. I hear what you're saying. You know what I mean? And it absolutely makes sense. But think about the feeling of the person having been replaced. Like... Yeah, breakups really, happen. I know, but it's a really crappy feeling. No, and then breakups I know for happen. Me, I, would, I would be sitting there thinking, so you mean to tell me y'all had this thing going no. all along? That's the thing. There's a no. million fish in the sea, No, right? I feel like, like if you're that bothered... in the same click, dating the same... People, no, I feel like to some extent, if you're that bothered, you probably still have feelings for that person. Like, if I'm over you and you end up dating someone I know, I'm like, oh my God, that's so great. I hope she's an upgrade. Right. No, if she's Anika, not an upgrade, it's like... But I, if she is, I good for you. Then there's nothing she's wrong crazy with... She's crazy and she will <laughs> Look cut where this you. one going. No, crazy. Oh, she's crazy. Not, most women, especially here, we will never accept mm. us being friends. Really? And you now dating my yeah, ex. Yeah, I don't know how I... Yeah, I really, you, wouldn't do, you wouldn't deal with well, that. Well, for me, you're not a friend if you're going to date my ex. You know what I mean? Exactly. I don't expect a but friend to date my they ex. They're still friends. They still go on the family dinners together. See, um, I'm they the hanging that. out like, mm -hmm. and it's like, okay, well, let's just babysit each other's children that we used that <laughs> no, would have been no. mine if we were still together. You know what I mean? That's I awkward. About That's but really you know what, awkward. though, ladies, this brings up a very interesting question as well. Because do we have a little bit of cheateration going on here? And if you are a <laughs> cheater, now think about it. Because I'm telling you, in the back of she my said mind, cheeration. in the back of my mind, I'm going to be wondering if something had been happening all along uh -huh. that I didn't know about. Oh, okay. So if you are a cheater, if indeed that is how the two of you got together, or not, I'm just saying, but if you are a cheater, once a cheater, always a cheater, what do you think? Oh, I say, you know what? No, I believe people can change. I personally can't trust a cheater after a cheater cheats. <laughs> and I feel, I feel but like cheaters can change. Yeah, I no no no. I, I believe that. I'm just saying for me, <laughs> you cheat on me and that's a wrap. You know what I mean? But I I, okay. believe, I believe people can change, and I especially believe if they cheat on you and you cuss them out and they realize, oh crap, I cheated on somebody that was so valuable. And you know, some people really can change and never do it again. Will I trust you to never do it again? No. Oof, I yeah. I'm not of that school of thought. I I honestly <laughs> think if you're a cheater. You just have that in you to, I mean, just yeah. want, eye wondering, all these crazy things. But no, what things. Yeah. And it, it comes down to why the person cheated. Because, okay, so let's just say you cheated because you have a problem with committing to one person. That is a character flaw. I Yes, I, I agree. I, that's chronic. someone I can never <laughs> trust because clearly that's some fiber, some gene you have that you, I, it just in you. <laughs> right? Skin. But you have it some people. Like a disease. It's like a you disease. Need to get rid of, sir. It's a disease. But some people actually cheated or, or had accidents if they were unhappy in a relationship for a long time, for example. Right. Um, if someone so, abused them in other areas. You're they talking felt about like the one-time one cheater versus the chronic cheater. Yeah, you know, or the, the, the chronic cheater who cheats for all the wrong reasons. Like, they have a good thing, but they still feel like, I won't beat it bad mm. all the time, everywhere. You know what I mean? Mm. So, yes, I believe that... Yeah, so there is an opportunity okay, yeah. for reform. There's the there's offer. An it depends. What you cheating for? Yeah. I mean, cheating ain't right. Don't cheat, people. I'm not saying go cheat. Don't I'm just cheat. saying, like... It, it, that would dictate, in my opinion, whether that person can change or not. Okay, so now we have the opportunistic cheater. <laughs> and then we have the, the chronic cheater. Yes. Chronic cheater. So yes. do you actually give that a second chance to that, uh, let's say, opportunistic cheater if you found out? See, that's the thing. You don't even know. Boy, now see, that's tough. I could sit here and be kumbaya, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Someone cheat on me. I think about a whole bunch of things. I think about, one, wow, you put my life on the line because I feel like you're going to give me STDs. Two, I can never trust you again because if you cheated on me and, like, lied to my if face. If you did it once. If you did it once. I don't know. Exactly. So, and then, you know, I'm a woman. So, naturally, I mean, the fact that <laughs> when you dream about a dude and you mind over something that happened in a dream, if you actually did something, I probably would never be able to forget it. So... Oof. What's the point of being with someone you don't trust? That's a hard one. You know, so. it is. This is straight up one of those um, conflicts of life. I'll be. I'll be real um, because I think on one hand, all of us would love to know that we could be forgiven mm -hmm. if we screw up. Yeah. Let's be real. 
Ain't nobody walking around here saying, oh yeah, I really messed up, but that's okay. That person don't have to forgive me at all. Ain't nobody saying that. Yeah. But at the same time, when it happens to us, of course, you know, um, we, or at least someone else screws up, you know, to us, that person wants us want to, to forgive them, them and Cut we're kind of like conflicted. So it's different when you want the receiving end. Exactly. I believe, yes, everybody deserves a second chance. But then again, you don't believe that from Les? Does it depend? <laughs> Les, does it depend Les, on what we are? No, I think Les is a very forgiving oh, person. What? Second chance. I say Les me all the time. I feel like Les <laughs> so crazy. Like I feel like if you listen, if you listen behind a door and. Leslie rowing a dude <laughs> on the phone, you'd be like, who is that person? I feel like you'd well, see fire and brimstones I mean, rolling from underneath the door cracks. It'd be some fog yeah. somewhere. Look at um, this face. Yeah, look at this face. Really? Pure really? innocence. It's no secret They're that the Les craziest has ones. a dark side. They're the craziest ones, the ones that you don't see it from. And I saw that. So what was that, that just now? What was that? We're going to go to commercial right now. <laughs> we are going to continue this conversation on the other side of our break. You are watching Do this you stew. hear that voice? Very though. crazy. We'll see oh, you my goodness. That. She's crazy. <laughs> Welcome back to The Stew on this wonderful Woman Crush Wednesday. Today we have a little melanin magic here in the building. Miss Naisha Tillis, the first ever Miss University of the Bahamas. Welcome. <laughs> Hello. Hi. How are you? Good morning. Oh, oh my goodness. Hi. Thank you welcome. for coming You look so beautiful. Oh, thank you. Oh, Hello. Thank you. Welcome. <laughs> So welcome once again to the show. First of all, you are absolutely stunning, looking yes. great, and this crown, all of this. Know, right? So your Thank title you. is Miss University of the Bahamas, first ever. Give me the deets. What was that like for you? The process. Give me the whole thing. Like just spill. Give me the stew. <laughs> um, so it was an interesting experience. Um, mm -hmm. Surreal. Couldn't believe it. Um, uh, short, mm -hmm. but. Intense process. Mm -hmm. um, it took a few weeks. We did trainings. We had um, Miss Grand Bahamas that came in and trained us. We had Miss World Bahamas. Um, we had Miss Universe come in. Uh, nice. We had walking, talking, you name it. We had it. Um, took everything in. And yeah. So tell us about the, I guess, the start of the pageant. You know, what's the purpose of it? So the purpose of the pageant is to help young ladies or create an avenue for young ladies to just be more active on campus, mm -hmm. um, have a platform, um, just to help with overall development and transitioning and being ambassador for the university, basically. Oh, that's amazing. Okay, so yeah. tell us a little bit about your platform mm -hmm. and what so you've So my promoting. platform is promoting mental health. Um, it's a passion of mine. I am a psychology major, uh, mm -hmm. senior. Um, so it's always been an interest of mine. I have a little brother, he has Down syndrome, um, and that's associated with intellectual disability. So because of that, that kind of stared me into wanting to be a clinical child psychologist. Mm -hmm. And yesterday was Down Syndrome Awareness Day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, always been interested in that. And as it relates to the university in particular, you know, going through the university, um, tons of homework, final exams, oh it can be really, really stressful. Mm -hmm. And you know, that has its psychological implications. So oftentimes we look at the outside ailments, but not what's going on internally. Wow. So, so tell me, Naisha, in terms of being a crowned Miss University of the Bahamas and you having this platform for mental illness, how do you both now work together in establishing ways to, I guess, raise awareness or to contribute to you know the cause overall well currently i'm a part of minds over matter psych society and with that we're able to promote mental health um, and just partnering with other organizations in promoting mental health as it relates to autism any other oh, any other type of dis defect basically mm -hmm. um, and with that you're able to reach out to the university and the community as well because a lot of persons they have 
a lot of mental defects going on. However, they don't have that outlet for them to go to and say, well, I need help. How can I find treatment right. or even facilities? Because we only have Sandalins. Mm, so, yeah. and with that, wow. it's only here in New Providence. What about the family islands? Wow. As it relates to uh, Hurricane Matthew, there are persons who suffered outside of Nassau as well. Wow. So the little psychologist that we do have here had to go out onto the family yeah. islands, then come back here uh, to assist the patients that they have here. So it's a lot going on as it relates to mental health. And how does the university oh. help students mm -hmm. who may, you know, be experiencing difficulties yeah challenges with um, stress of school, being overworked, having little time, and maybe a few mental issues themselves. Well, um, I know that we have listening circles, uh, you're able, we hold um, symposiums, um, forums, lectures, uh, where you're able to learn how to manage your time. Mm -hmm. uh, you have lecturers where you're able to go to their um, office hours and just talk to them and they're able right. to assist you and give you advice in moving forward. Um, I have a lecturer, her name is Dr. Campbell. She is amazing. <laughs> I am always at her office hours <laughs> and you're just able to have that person to talk to and just get advice from. So, What, what yeah. are some practical things people can do if they don't have access to people like that? Because I've actually had my first like nervous breakdown in the 11th grade from the stresses of being a high school student and preparing for exams and things like that. So, you know, for people who don't have lecturers, you know, with office hours, what are some practical things that they can do in their spare time? Time management is important and mm -hmm. it's key. And for me, I write everything down. Yeah. So just writing things down and just being aware, mm -hmm. you know, so oftentimes we have so many things going on. We're not aware of what's going on now and in the present and all mm -hmm. that we would have to do. So sometimes what you have to do kind of slips your mind mm -hmm. so just writing everything down that way you know what you need to do you're able to have a better grip on everything that's going on in your life and you're able to handle whatever that whatever comes your way basically because you have an idea of well this is what I need to do right. and I'm gonna get it done and if something comes your way you know whether or not you can handle it based on everything that you have going on wow. so yeah right. well thank you so much for coming and talking to us the first ever Miss University of the Bahamas Yay. is here on the stew mm -hmm. and we you know your platform platform is amazing. Continue to push. I heard you're a senior. Yes. So this is the final year to push and yes. put those time management <laughs> skills to work. Yes. 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 So after the break, we'll be right back with a little bit of uh, Anika's style minute. You don't want to miss it. <laughs> you're watching the stew and this is your style minute spring is upon us and summer is not too far behind so I want to give you a few options to wear this summer for date night a little black dress with some fringing is always so sexy and something with some cutout is a perfect way to turn up the heat next up is mesh madness this is a great way to turn up the sexy but still reserve a little bit something that's a little see-through with a classic black bra or a nude one is also a great pairing for date night and finally, a fabulous fringe. This little bad boy just happens to be a belt, so you can pair it with anything in your closet. Just a perfect little way to turn up the fun. This has been your Style Minute. You're watching The Stew. I'll see you guys next time. Well, it's been a wonderful Wednesday indeed. We want to thank our Woman Crush Wednesday for coming in and speaking with the ladies of the stew. Also, we've had some invigorating conversation. Again, if he's a cheater, he's probably always going to be a cheater. But don't listen to me. I don't know much. What about you? <laughs> <laughs> that's just your viewpoint. That's, you know, a, yeah, that's my viewpoint. Views here. It's fine. It's all yeah. good. It's all good. But of course, catch us on Friday for more great conversation with these ladies, with us ladies. And catch us, if you've missed any episode, catch us on YouTube, ILTV Studios, and like us on Facebook. We have our own page, The Stew Daytime. And if you're on Instagram and like to like photos, then we're on ILTV Studios there too. So we'll see you on Friday. Don't miss it. More stew coming then. Bye. <laughs>
vibe is right We can talk about anything you like uh, Just listen Take a walk right over to my kitchen oh, uh.